Welcome to the Library Love Fest podcast. I'm Virginia Stanley. I'm Lainey Mays. We are the library marketing team at HarperCollins Publishers. Join us every week as we present buzzworthy books through author interviews, conversations with editors, and expert opinions from librarians like you. Enjoy the show. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Check it out. Hello, and welcome to the Library Love Fest podcast. I'm Lainey, and I'm joined by Virginia and Grace. Welcome back. This is our monthly podcast episode where we tell you about our HarperCollins titles that made the library reads list, crossing our fingers that we get to continue doing this every month. Luckily, we're back for another one for the December list. So uh, we have a very exciting announcement, one book that is very near and dear to all of our hearts. We have a title on the December library reads list. Grace, mm-hmm. do you want to tell us what that is? Yeah, so Eleanor Lippman, um, her novel Misdemeanor made the December list, and this is on sale December 27th, so you can buy it then. And this is her second time making the list. In 2019, she made it for her novel Good Riddance. So we're really excited for her to make the list for the second time. And this is an exciting year for Eleanor. The Pollard Memorial Library established the Eleanor Lippman Award for Writing, which encourages um, students of Lowell and um residents to share their creative fiction work and non-fiction work as well. So we're really excited for her. Yay, Eleanor! Woohoo! This this came near and dear to her heart boy. She was so when you when you hear her her talk which was four minutes of pure love for libraries. I mean I was thinking about what must this feel like to be Eleanor Littman to have these great you know, these great memories, these great memories specifically of libraries. And when you listen to this, you'll know what we're talking about. But then, I mean, to truly be so excited to make this list, it means so much to her. And these, uh, you know, to have this award named in her honor, her whole family, her father, where do you hear it? It's, it's just great. And she's just bubbling over with, I don't know, just more than enthusiasm. It's just pure joy, I think. It's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, so we do these podcast episodes every month so we can have a little two-way communication between the authors who make the list and the librarians who voted for the book. They get to have their acceptance speech of sorts, and we we love doing this. Before we play Eleanor's very, very excited audio that we have, uh, Virginia, if people don't know what Library Reads List is and they're listening, maybe they're librarians who want to know how to get involved in it, could you do a a short and sweet wrap up of what that is. Well, funny you should ask, Lainey. <laughs> Library reads. Yeah, it is uh, such a cool thing. So once a month, librarians. Well, let me let me rephrase that. It's not just librarians. It's anyone who works in a library. So you don't have to have your MLS. You don't. You, you just need to work in a library. And if you do, you are eligible to vote for um, books that you love, forthcoming publications. So you vote, um, votes are due the first day of the month prior to the books on sale. And so you have to have access to these galleys ahead of time so you can read them, love them, and vote on them. And so um, there are 10 books every month from all of the publishers Every month, only 10 make the list. So you know that you're getting the cream of the crop. You're getting those books that rise above all the others. And, um, you know, this is uh, voted on by those who love books probably more than, I don't know, a lot of other people. They're just brilliant people, smart people, well-read people, and they work in libraries. And so these are their votes. And so... Keeping in good company, we have Eleanor Lippman. So now you get to hear her talk about how thrilled she is to be on this list. 
Hello, hello. This is Eleanor Lipman. I haven't stopped smiling since I heard that Ms. Demeanor is on the December Library Reads list. Now, I know all authors love libraries and librarians, but do they all have a framed color photo of their hometown library hanging in the room where they write, as I do? Maybe not. So a little more on Lippmann Library Love, starting with Louis Lippmann Library Love, my dad, who's an avid reader and library regular, an understatement. He never bought books. Apologies to booksellers who may be listening. He considered what was then Lowell City Library, his bookstore. He'd read a review in the New York Times, cut it out, drive to the library and give it to Sylvia Taunter, the assistant director, who conveniently had graduated from high school with my sister and would order it for him. Okay, but more about this book, my 14th novel, Misdemeanor. I wrote it the way I write all my books, nervously. Will it be good enough? Will readers love my characters? I want them to. I want them to be both entertained and charmed. I want them to find it both funny and poignant. I want it to have a satisfying ending, a happy ending. So I sent the manuscript to my editor in mid-December, worrying the whole time. I waited, then it was Christmas, then our whole family had COVID, they were all fine. I worried even more. And then one Saturday, a Saturday, no less, an email arrived from her that began with, I absolutely adore the book. What a day that was. Misdemeanor is narrated by Jane Morgan, who is on home confinement, AKA house arrest. She's not a criminal. In fact, she's a lawyer. But she happened to be seen by a prudish neighbor having sex on the roof terrace of her Manhattan apartment building, and that prude dialed 911. Soon her doorman confides that there is another building resident who is also wearing an ankle monitor. That would be Perry Salisbury, also not, not much of a felon, a good guy. It's a love story. It's a food story. It's a sister story. One of my favorite quotes came in a beautiful blurb by Kathleen Shine, an author I love. She wrote that I'd written a novel to delight even the weariest, weariest soul of our times. I was very recently back on October 19th, to be exact, uh, to my hometown library in Lowell, Mass, Pollard Memorial Library which to my great honor established an Eleanor Lippmann Prize. I drove there to present it and thought, if only my mother and father could have been here. And my high school English teachers, Mr. Sullivan and Miss Shea, and especially Mr. Sokolowski, my sophomore English teacher, who at graduation presented me gift wrapped and with kind of a little ceremony, his fountain pen. Oh, one more thing about my library bond. When my son was four years old, got a little scraped up in the playground. The nursery school tried to reach me. I wasn't home, so they called Stores Library, Long Meadow, Mass, where they found me. Not that it was on my emergency call list, yet they guessed it was where I'd be. I'd like to think that the takeaway is, if you need a Lippman, go to your library. Thank you so much. Ms. Demeanor and I are honored to be a December Library Reads. It does not get any better than that. I want to Honestly. put a library as my emergency contact now. <laughs> I love that they didn't even know that, like, she didn't put them down as a contact. I'm like, well, the kid's a little banged up, so call the library because we know she'll be there. It was, I am telling you that even the email surrounding this audio that Eleanor sent me was just so excited to hear about this pic. She was just so excited. And actually the library framed picture that she was talking about, she sent me that in an email and I immediately said, well, if you, is it okay if I share this? She's like, of course, please share it. So we'll put that everywhere so you can see the lovely framed photograph of the Lowell Library, and she said that the photographer was actually a librarian there named Tony Sampas. And so 
we have that really wonderful photograph. So I, she has, it's really a beautiful library. So if she has that hanging up while she's writing, I can't imagine a better inspiration. Yeah. Yay. Congratulations, Ooh. Eleanor. Woo love it. Love when it works and love when it's. Well, I actually don't remember any author who hasn't been over the moon upon learning that they've made the list, but there's there's something very special here, I think. Yeah, and I, I just want to encourage everyone also to go listen to our Facebook Live with Eleanor. We had one uh, an episode a while back. It's available on YouTube or or Facebook, whichever you prefer. We've been we've I've fell in love with this book right when I read it. And so we've been screaming from the rooftops about it. And we had a great Facebook Live where she talked all about everything in the book. There's so many layers to the book, too. I think um, if you want a more in-depth conversation about it, please go back and listen to that. Super lovely. Excellent. Well, hopefully we'll be back next month with an announcement of yes. more authors. Until then, get to read Till then. Fingers crossed. Keep on voting. Yay. If you have any questions about Library Reads, check out librarireads.org. Sign up for our newsletter for monthly picks, staff suggestions from us. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Take care of yourselves. <laughs> See you next time. We hope. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Library Love Fest podcast. For more information on this week's episode, go to librarylovefest.com. Enjoying the show? We would love to hear what you think. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Library Love Fest and on Instagram at Harper Library. Be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and share the show with a friend. See you next week.